So we're recording the subcommittee, the reimagining our school facility subcommittee meeting, February 1st, 2023 at 4.21 p.m. Um, Christina Barge, superintendent. Jean Wall. Karen Patnode, assistant superintendent. Elizabeth Deneve. Glenn Johnson Lusad. Okay. So, I thought we should start the meeting by uh, letting both of you tell us what you think should be reported to the public. To the public or to the well, to school? The school well, to the school committee and the public. Okay. Uh, can I just give Glenn a quick, um, everything below the gray line is really feedback from the staff. Oh, okay. That's, I just kind of tried to differentiate it. And then yeah. I, I have a little bit of feedback from the administrative team when you are ready. I mean, I would think reporting back to them, this is what we heard from them. This is, I think this is a fair summary of, of what, we, what we heard from the public. So. And then what is our recommendation going oh, to be? Oh, recommendation. I mean, oh, another issue. Yeah, that's another issue. So you want, um, what you just said is you think just copies of this will will be good for a summary of information. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only thing then that I will add is the administrative feedback, which was um, they don't care how you slice it, but eighth grade needs to be at a middle school and fifth grade needs to be at an elementary school. Mm -hmm. Administratively. Mm -hmm. Right, Karen? Correct. Okay. So that they so that was their only feedback? However else it gets done, we can live with, but those um, grade levels are more maturity-wise, better matched, mm -hmm. eighth grade to middle school, fifth grade to elementary. Okay. That was the overriding priority for the administrative team. Okay, well, that's really interesting to know. That's good to know. They'll, I mean, they'll do whatever else that, you know, right. they, they don't. They'll go with the flow on anything else, but when I said, what is it you guys are worried about? What do you think about all this? That was what it was. So that's, that's option the two net. is that's off the net. table from my perspective, right? I, yep, if that doesn't do it, then. Yeah. Okay, good. Mm-hmm, okay. It depends on, do you want to honor what they say? I mean, I'm not, we need to, discuss it here oh as oh. a as well, a why uh, wouldn't we honor what they say i mean I, I think that this is really well rounded and i think you adding what the administrative feedback is is perfect for what the overarching issue is what how everybody feels about it this is, this is how feelings are yeah, yeah. so everyone's and, been consulted it's all collected that part of the puzzle has been completed so in reporting to the school committee, we would say option two is now totally off the table? I would be inclined to follow the guidance of the administration because I think they're looking at student outcomes, they're looking at student development, they're saying, please get the eighth grade at middle school. And we're hearing that not just from them, but mm -hmm. from the public in other places as well. So. Right. Mm -hmm. But so how do we accomplish that is the... Yeah. That's the... Other, that's the hard part. This was the easy part. Collecting the data was kind of the easy part, right? Now we are in the hard part. Well, that level of data. I mm -hmm. mean, there's, there are a lot of outstanding questions. So I guess the question is, do you folks want to recommend that administratively we get any other information, that we do anything else um, like that? Well, one you know, question that's occurred to me, because if we had to decide today, you know, which one we were going with, I would probably go with option one. I heard a lot of downsides from the educators that concerned me, and mm -hmm. certainly there were parents who had problems with it too. But just for, for the equity issues, because it is done in other school districts and it seems to work, you know, we have a lot of fears based on not having done it before. Sure. I think it's time to try something new. Mm -hmm. but. The, the issues around options three and four and the expense, I feel like within the current environment, with our current mayor, mm -hmm. 
I would still go with option one because there's not going to be more funds for this kind of development. But there's an election in November, so yeah. I don't I don't want to necessarily drag our feet. But we're going to have four years with whoever's the next mayor, and that could really mm -hmm. change what's possible. I don't know that, but I just sometimes I can't tell whether there are more resources this school could access under a different leadership or not. So mm -hmm. that's what that's a question mark for me. Well, I have served now on three building committees. Mm -hmm. So I know what's involved. If if you believe that I know what's involved. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, and it's a very long drawn out process. Yeah. It will not take care of the immediate problem mm -hmm. yeah. for many, many years because the committee has to be formed. Then you have to find a project manager. Then you have to find an architect. We have mm -hmm. three buildings that would have to be remodeled or four. Uh, and it's, it's just more, it will take a long time to do it. My recommendation would be that we recommend that a new elementary school be put on the town projected uh, capital improvements program in 10 years, because by then, the high school will have been paid for, right? Isn't that? And, you know, we would have the time to form a committee, figure out where it would go, design it, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, would that? Well, yeah, but then, I mean, I totally agree with Glenn. And I felt like when the educators were speaking about option one, that they really didn't, they weren't excited about working in this environment, whatever environment option one would create. And so I feel like I definitely don't think that, I mean, I don't want to add to any stress or you know cause staffing problems by pushing forward on option one I would worry that educators would leave I have to share one thing around that mm -hmm. um, we heard that from a very small percentage of people mm -hmm. and educators are going to leave here regardless right. and they are leaving other districts too okay so I, I think hearing a level of anxiety from them is mm -hmm. certainly something that we would want to be responsive to. I completely uh, like agree and respect that. We want to address anxiety for them about whatever model is identified. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't want to say if you pick option three, let look for example, mm -hmm. we pick, pick option three, go through all of the construction stuff, go through all of that time and money that at the end of that whole process, the people who have told you that they're gonna quit will still be here. Mm -hmm. okay. and, yeah. But I, I hear I'm anxiety, glad you're, you know. I'm glad that you're speaking to that. Well, I, and, and the other part of, let's say we're going to redo uh, Four Corners, because mm -hmm. it, it seems the most cramped of all of the schools to, to me when we went on the tour the children there would have to be put somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just you go in yeah. and bring in strange construction workers or do it over a summer. Right. I right. mean, I'm just saying that the construction part is fine, but I don't see any reason to spend the money we would have to spend on these old schools. Mm -hmm. Let's think big plan and think build a ele new elementary school because any work that we do on the schools means that we have to bring everything up to date, which is electricity, handicap accessibility. I mean, it's just beyond the stuff that you can imagine that will kick in if you haven't been involved in these whole mm -hmm. buildings. I hear you and I completely understand, but I worry that it, that's a hard pill for the public to swallow because they'll say things like, what about all these schools we already have? What about all these, what's gonna happen to those buildings? What about all the money that we've poured into X, Y, and Z? You know what I mean? They're gonna come at it from that angle. So I don't know is, I can't imagine that a 10 year plan for a new elementary school 
would be something that I'm not I'm not saying this is my personal feeling. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like let's it, say that it, they're the ten years gives you time to plan for it, uh -huh. bring the public on board. I got gotcha. you. It's not that we would just say, Oh, I think we should build a new elementary school and I that solves all totally of Totally understand that. That's not what I'm saying. I just think that it's gonna be a hard pill to swallow with financially where everybody is feeling like I'm not saying that that's true but I, I'm just saying that you're gonna get so much pushback for that that it might not be worth going down that road not that I don't support it but then what do we do with the schools that we have what do we do I mean eventually we have to do something with the Green River School I mean these they sit fallow for long enough it becomes a bigger fish than just selling them, right? I do wonder if it would make sense in terms of Green River, just this piece for Green River, because the number of students that can be served there is relatively small. Right, that's what you said. Right, I think it was like 150, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at the number that they said, but maybe if the committee asked me to look into what the next steps would be, around Green River and what the options are, maybe that would be helpful. Okay. Um, I mean, that's just a question, because at some point, you're right, we have to do something with it. And if we're, if we're going to refurbish it and use it, regardless of what we use it for, you know, there's been conversation about, do we do an alternative school? Well, if we do, there's a ton of paper and programming and all that, but first we need heat. Right. So at minimum, it's over a million dollars to do Green River. So we still, even if we want to go that way, we still come up against the bonding issues that um, Roxanne referenced. We, like we still come up against all those things. So maybe it would be helpful to know what the option is. Can we sell it? Can we, what do we have to do with this mass building? You know, the pre previous loan, like is that mm -hmm. something worth you guys voting mm -hmm. to have me do? And then at least you'll, we'll know that. I would be 100% willing to bring that up and, and I, have you pursue that. It, well, if if we're going to push uh, option two, if we're going to say option one is off the table. No, and option two. two. I mean, option two is off the table and, mm -hmm. and our community outreach said option one could work. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we also say we've got a year to explore all of the advantages and disadvantages, and this mm -hmm. should be a monthly report back to the school committee. Let's start with transportation, which okay. seemed to be the biggest objection, yes, and have sure. the superintendent report back to us first mm -hmm. on how to solve the transportation problem and the starting times for the schools, and also, have the community reach out to us with other problems that we don't have on our survey that they're worried about and explore all of that over this year. Mm -hmm. And if we run into some mountain mm -hmm. that we can't get over, we drop it and just leave everything like it is. I mean, that's the other alternative. I love that idea just because we'll get to know what's gonna happen. You know, maybe, maybe as Glenn said, with the change in leadership, maybe things might be different. And maybe then, you know, we'll know. Mm -hmm. But I also love your idea of us asking you to explore the Green River School. That would at least, you know, show that we're working on it. And your idea of coming monthly. And I think that's great. I think that that would make parents feel really comfortable, you know, like that we're working on it. Because this is not a, like an instant thing, right? You said at least two to four years. Well, construction, NESDEC said that was at least, um, you know, three to four years. To me, even if we do option one, that's, um, let me see. Temporary. Well, it's through, it wouldn't start until September of 24 mm -hmm. because it's going to take a long time to do the logistics. So this school year would sort of be you folks as a committee getting all the information, making a decision, and then next year it would be doing logistics. You know, actually taking teacher A and putting them in room this at, at that school and like doing all of that. So there is time still for your 
scenario to mm-hmm. potentially play out. Mm-hmm. Um, there is time to figure out what we do with Green River because I'm not necessarily hearing you folks say, let's go with option three and reopen Green River. Mm-mm. Okay. It just, so it doesn't seem like we have enough information or money. So then it sounds like you took option two off the table. Yeah. I'm investigating what basically how and the impact of divesting us of Green River, those two pieces. And then really it's let's get data about the questions that were raised about option one. And we can, as a committee, you folks can still explore, um, you know, you can still ask me to explore options about construction and studies and whatever else. I just, please don't do it all in one month. Um, but that's still a choice to, to sort of, you know, see how things play out over the next few months and elections and budget years and, mm-hmm. and all of that. I mean, that... So we just basically would be doing a deeper dive into option one and exploring more about the Green River School right now that's what I kind of heard from you yeah I think that that sounds like a good thing to put forward and, and tell them tell them that we're take, thinking of take are we thinking of taking option two off the table and what about option four are we kind of sort of taking that off the table at this point as well well um, if, if we're you know? asking the superintendent to go out and explore the options for Green River we wouldn't yeah. be quite taking it off so we're just sort of we're we're keeping option four as something that we're exploring further option four doesn't really mention green river school but no well so option three is reopen green river so Mm -hmm. it sounds like right right. so it sounded to me like you both all three of you sort of said green river is not really the option the piece i have to figure out is how do we Take it off the school. I think we have to find okay. we have to find an answer to that question because if that's going to become a public nightmare. That's fine. I can do that, yeah. and we can do the transportation piece from option one, and then when you get that information, then you can ask the next question about mm-hmm. something. So yeah, okay. So the motion would essentially be direct the superintendent to start um, exploring the transportation impacts of option one Mm -hmm. and how we could divest from the Green River School. That sounds like it. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. I would second that. And you know, maybe we can also endorse, I mean, I guess might be helpful. I mean, I kind of have like a general picture, but it might be helpful to hear the reasoning from the administrators about wanting like being so wanting to keep the eighth grade in a middle school. Oh, I can tell you that. Yeah, I think no, they hear that at the meeting and, you know. Yeah, I can talk about that, that's yeah. for sure. That'd I mean, it's, it's- Is there a way that you can tie in the how the future population is going to be when you do that presentation? Because I think people, that's going to be, that's going to be like a sticky part if we eventually come forward and talk about like, oh, in 10 years, maybe we want to make an elementary school. The public is going to say like right off the bat, well, if we have constant declining population mm-hmm. and we already have these schools, is there any way that we could know how the population would, I'm getting to how I'm formulating <laughs> questions, sorry. Yep. Is there a way that we could hear about how the population would be spread out in that option? I don't know. You mean like across the city? Yeah, across the school. Oh, I don't think so. Is there so. a way to know? I, I'd have to ask NESDEC, but I'm not aware. That would actually be, I think, a... Um, that would be like a planning committee kind of conversation, talking about where they're looking at residential development over the next 10 years, if they are, mm-hmm. where, you know, things like that. I think that would be something to explore if the committee gets to the point where the option of a new elementary school is actually being entertained. Oh, no, no. I mean, I mean, if we're talking about option three or four, if we're doing K through five at each of the four elementary schools, I mean, how is that going to break down population wise? 
the other parties, how does it work for equity wise? Right. I mean, we, well, the we don't really know at, at this point what, oh, if we're doing K to five? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Not where we would build it or like what, I, I mean like. So if we do construction at each of the schools. We don't have, we don't have equity. Not particularly, no. What would happen, I think is the same thing in option two, where I draw the lines for each school in a different way. So there's Leiden Woods right now is um, routed to go to um, Newton. Yeah, I knew that was Newton, but I'm thinking is is no, route it goes to federal. Sorry, it goes that's to what federal. Yes. right. So you confirmed the wrong thing. I, I did. I know. Uh -huh. to think about that. Okay. Yeah, they so go to federal. Yes. yes. So Leiden Woods is routed to go to federal. Mm -hmm. So if we reroute and Leiden Woods goes to Four Corners which is fine, mm -hmm. then I have to identify which neighborhood that currently goes to Four Corners is closer to federal geographically and reroute them. I oh, still I have to redraw lines, yeah. even with option three or four. Okay. I still mm -hmm. have to do that. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that you had to it's, do that. It's okay. I Backing think the, up, erase my past mm, question. No, I but I think it would, Option four, three or four, although I think three less, but anyway, option four, if we do some construction at each building, it addresses some of the space issues, like we'd have more space for our um, specials, we'd have more space for our intervention staff, we'd have an appropriate, um, appropriately accessible nurse's office at Four Corners and at Federal, it addresses those issues for sure. And it could address equity issues, but I would still have to redraw lines. Right, you would redraw the lines and presumably you would be doing so with an eye towards equity, you know, with our updated picture of equity that they didn't have yeah. the last time they redrew the lines. Yeah. Think. And so that would be nice, but the only one that really kind of gets all the students mixed in together is option one. Mm -hmm. with the idea of building a new school at some in point, 10 years, right? yeah. which, which continues then, then that all us, students. It either brings us back to, oh, you mean a single, a single big elementary school, I see. No, Jean's got a big grand plan for 10 years, is what I she's saying. Yeah. Yeah. K to five Jean, all under one yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that would take care of it, yes. Exactly, yeah. That would so, be ideal, but yeah. then we have to deal with all the buildings and all but, the whatever later. You know what? that's we'll, 10 years. All be, we'll all be gone by the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you literally. could sell it to, yes. you can sell it to a new mayor that they were always looking for housing in Franklin mm -hmm. County. They could turn it into housing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Green River should be turned into administrative offices for mm -hmm. the city, is what I think. Yeah, yeah. the mayor's looking for something anyway. Yeah, Instead there of redoing you go. the library, she should move into Green River School. Yeah. What do you think she should do with the library? So put it up for auction. Yeah. Yeah. Make a lot more money. And it goes back on the tax records, and it has to keep its historical designation, yeah. so it's all... But she didn't mm -hmm. ask me what I think. So. She did. I'm so surprised. <laughs> I think it's a great that, idea, Jean. Okay, so right now, okay, so I want to recap. Three. It's your, it's your stuff. But just so I understand where we are, option two, we've taken that off the mm -hmm. the the table. Option one, at this point, the committee is going to ask me to um, explore the transportation piece, which was a primary concern for option one. And then you are going to ask me to figure out what we need to do to divest the district of Green River and the mm -hmm. impacts and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then any further requests will be on hold until I answer those two. Yeah, and I wonder yeah. if we could also get the school committee to endorse the administration's recommendation that no matter what, we keep the grade in the middle of school. That's great. Like that that. What do you think of that, Jean? Well, do we have room for the eighth grade in the middle school right now? I mean, don't we if have you to move moved the us grade? out? Yeah. If we moved us out, so you'd have to put us somewhere. But 
like the Green River, green River School. But you'd still have to do over a million dollars worth of upgrades at Green River. You're going to want heat there, apparently. Uh, you know, <laughs> yes. I so think demanding. maybe no air conditioning for you guys, I, but heat. Yeah. Okay. Heat, I would like, yes, plumbing that's functional, <laughs> technology, yeah, you know, the we, little things. We could let the eighth grade be an outdoor learning center like sure. they had with the center school. Sure. But we do know the they have to have a bathroom. Hey, that works. <laughs> I know teachers there. That sounds not all day, every day. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Next week, I know well, they're very happy. Not our eighth grade. But I'm into could. outdoor alternative school. Um, so. But, so Glenn, we could, um, I can tell you the administration and I think, quite frankly, a number of staff would not be um, upset to hear eighth grade at a middle school, fifth grade at elementary level mm -hmm. um, as a priority. Eighth grade could come back here. We would have to move um, and likely have to do some deconstruction because they did construction to make it offices. We'd have to deconstruct to make it classrooms again. But if you had to do all of that, it could occur and it, there would be space. We'll, well, if, we'll see. We first got to get the fifth grade out of here um, to get the eighth grade back. Eighth grade could fit down here if we moved. If that's what I'm administration. asking. So, so, so if you actually, moved, that's actually maybe, option five. maybe. I never heard option, that option before. One of the concerns was that the city just spent a lot of money oh, to construct to here, yeah. right? And do we deconstruct? And we would have to actually do the numbers and count classrooms and all that to see if in fact they would fit here. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And the fifth grade would then be in with the eighth grade, which right. would be the parents' worst nightmare right. if they thought it was bad being with the sixth and seventh grade. Correct, right. <laughs> absolutely. Right. Well, maybe we don't have the school committee like formally vote to endorse that, but just have a general discussion about that yeah. recommendation. Maybe that's okay. group of questions number two later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think Not first round, second round. Sounds to me like but, you guys are. But I think we should say that we're going to keep meeting Mm -hmm. And coming back to them, and parents keep sending us concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's great. I did get two, I think, two emails through the course of this entire thing, which I will get and forward to all of you. Um, Lauren has kept them. I think literally only two parent emails about this mm -hmm. entire thing. Apparently, they like the in person uh, yeah. opportunities better. Well, but considering we so. have. Um, 1,400 students, you know, we didn't get a ton of feedback, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but people certainly had the opportunity. Yeah. Well, people came. The thing yes, is, for the in-person closer, closer to actual change, yeah. you will mm -hmm. get more feedback. I think so. Yeah. I think it feels unreal because I've been here 13 years. We've talked a lot about this in 13 years, so mm -hmm. I think as it gets as these monthly meetings happen and as you keep informing folks, I think there will be more lively conversations and more engagement. Yeah, oh no, I'm sure that's I, the case. I did um, actually remember one challenge from option one that I don't see here, which was oh. when people were talking about the possibility of older kids and younger kids interacting oh, with yeah. formal programs or like your younger brother and your older sister in the same school. Like that. Um. Goodness, so, like, know. mentoring opportunities. It was mentoring, oh. and it was just kind of age. You know what? You're right, Glenn. You're yeah. absolutely right. They were talking about, like, buddies and yeah. reading. And to yeah. Even brothers and sisters. No, you're right. And, you did. They did talk about that. And, and that would be something that we can easily figure out a solution to. Sure. I mean... Because yeah. all we have to do is tell Christine and Karen to take care of it. Yes, still we'll do it. That's not the biggest. <laughs> that is not an insurmountable issue. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. 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 yeah, and off they go. I will share one like, thing that's, to leave. that's interesting. <laughs> bye, oh, Karen. Bye. Thank we'll you. see you tomorrow. Bye. One piece that's interesting, because I know I hear that, and I will, I'll share it in this small group, but in Belchertown, where we are, my kids all transition schools. Um, my boys were never so excited to know that they would only have to be together one year. 
Right. My middle one was a freshman, my oldest one was a senior, and they said, thank God, that's the only time we have to be together. <laughs> so that, that sort of cuts both ways. Wow. Mm -hmm. so um, speaking as a twin, identical twin, I oh. guess your brother gets on your nerves when he's around <laughs> you all the time. Right? They yeah. wanted their own space, their own identities, their own, like... Thank you. Bye. So, all right, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Yes. You. So the, um, that piece... I think that's relevant or that's applicable to the people who were speaking, right. but I don't know that that is universal for all mm -hmm. children. You know, yeah. sometimes having a little space of your own isn't the worst. So my parents might wish that their parent, children would want to spend all that time together and maybe they don't actually. Yeah, well, that could be. Um, I think the big, draw, the big pushback we're going to have is transportation from the parents. They're all very worried about yeah. They have three kids at three different schools. How do they get them there? On the bus. That That's crazy. what I was thinking. I was thinking, well, then you finally have to ride the bus consistently. We have wonderful buses because Mescus does a great job. There we have. I know. Good, we have good stuff. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like the, I'm like Miss Frizzle wrong. over here, so I get it. There's nothing wrong. We have one or two kids that are challenging. They're not just challenging on the bus. Um, mm. But really, the buses are a very viable option. And they're not full. They are not They are full. not full. Like, my bus is never full, and I'm always like, where are these kids? Like, why aren't they get not They are not enough? full, but we can't reduce the runs because of time. Right. So I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm we curious have how this is going to, yeah, there's totally room. So I'm curious yeah. how it's going to yep. shake sure. out and and what the stagger times are going to be. Yeah, Jake has started working on it, so I'm sure by the March meeting we'll have something to share about transportation. Yeah. Even by the time we reconvene as a subcommittee, we'll have something. It might even make the buses nicer, to be honest with you. You mean with more kids on them? Well, with more kids, but with grades separated. Yeah. I mean, Well, it would be all the elementary schools would be on one bus, wouldn't they? Well, so the options that... The, the, the factors that I asked Jake to talk about. How do we do it if we keep the start times? How do we do it if we stagger start times? And then do we do it by school runs or do we do it by neighborhood? So if it was you're on bus seven and you're mm -hmm. the K one run, you'd have to go all the way around town mm -hmm. or you and somebody else would go all the way around mm -hmm. town. And then another two buses would go all the way around town for grades two and three mm -hmm. and four and five, or you could be this neighborhood and you pick up K to five. Yeah. So yeah. he's got a- To know when to get off the bus though? I mean, I guess they learn which school. Just shut them. Just, yeah. they know. No, because again, not to keep bringing up Belchertown, but I've lived through this. Yeah. The elementary kids all got picked up at one time, even though mm -hmm. there were three elementary schools. Yeah. And they get to the school and they, the bus drivers just kind of say, okay, everybody, kindergarten and first grade. And oh, yeah. they have staff outside. And yeah. worst case, one of mine didn't get off a bus at some point. And they take a little ride to the other elementary schools. And then they get brought back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they get off. And they said they had an adventure. And then they go to class. Okay. <laughs> so it, And then middle school and high school take mm -hmm. the same bus runs mm -hmm. in Belchertown and they know when to get off. And do they all get picked up at the front door? Or do they all get no. picked up at a bus stop? See, we pick them up at the front door. Like I literally pull up to kids' front doors and pick them up. Like individually all the time. Like I will stop 25 times on one street to pick up each kid. I can't Is even get- Is it a main road though? Main road, side road, country club road. I can't even get them to get on the same bus if they're 15 feet away from each other. So I'm no, just curious. This is the first time I'm hearing that. Oh really? Yep. I'm just curious if no. Belcher Town, with your experience, bus stops. Bus stop. Bus stops. Hello. Bus. I love it. Schlep your schlep your body to a bus stop. Mm -hmm. Main roads are a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, Route 181. That's a main road in town. The kids who get picked up picked up there. The houses are generally far enough apart where it's mm -hmm. you know individual stops. I live in a neighborhood with a main road in and then multiple side streets off, mm -hmm. and there are three pickup spots. Yeah. 
So advocate for bus stops, ma'am. You're here with the uh, right person. In, on a main <laughs> road, I wouldn't necessarily do bus stops on Federal Street, but mm -hmm. on some of the side streets. Okay, mm -hmm. good Why to know. Why your clock say yep. 7 o'clock? It, it doesn't, doesn't work. work. Oh, you can sit here and it goes. Yeah, Seven, sometimes eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. It'll go, <laughs> woo! It'll start going oh, crazy. Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, at, la at the end of last year, our maintenance budget was expended, and that was not an emergency. So I didn't get my, I didn't ask yeah. to get my clock fixed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this room, I have 45 places to tell the time. So I that to, is not my. I used to work in public health emergency preparedness, and we went for meetings at the Massachusetts Emergency Management Association in Framingham. They have a bunker; you go underground. Yeah. And it was not confidence inspiring because we we're in a room like this with a big table. And there was a clock on the wall, and it had the wrong time. <laughs> and you're thinking, this is where they're going to be managing the emergency. <laughs> no, they can't track the uh, <laughs> events as they unfold. Oh. Are we adjourning? I, are we adjourning, Jean? I think. Oh, yes. Let's okay. 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 All right, adjourned at four fifty-six.